But now they're saying, well, what about some other form of life? But when we talk about life on another planet, we are usually talking about life as we know it. Silicon-based life form, is that something as we know it? Well, no, we don't know any silicon-based life form. What's the problem with talking about life as we don't know it? Well, the first problem is, how do we know if it's real life? So how are we going to talk about another life form that we're not familiar with? Maybe it's not life at all, but it just looks like life, and how would we know? Robots, for example, move and think like humans, and they appear intelligent. Does that mean they are alive? What's the definition of life? That, that starts changing as well. Now, if we're going to talk about life as we don't know it, then of course, you can make anything happen. If we're going to accept any definition as intelligent sentient beings, maybe a rock is a life form. Maybe a spaghetti is an intelligent life form. I mean, if we're going to change the definition, then how do we know that we have an intelligent life form or not? We don't call that science. It's a fairy tale on top of another fairy tale. I mean, the nature of fairy tale is that you can make anything possible. You just come up with a good story and suddenly you've got life. If anyone pulls that card on you saying that some mysterious life form can exist in some other way, then simply thank them because they've just agreed with you that intelligent life as we know it couldn't exist on another planet. Otherwise, why even mention it? Why pull that card? We have more silicon on Earth than carbon, yet life on Earth is carbon-based. But funny enough, the universe has more carbon than silicon. It's the other way around. That means you would expect life on Earth to be silicon-based because we have plenty of it and life in space to be carbon-based. So why assume that life would ever be silicon-based in space? Surely you would expect it to be carbon-based, seeing it's full of it, right? You can see it on the table there. Um, the numbers are much, much bigger. So it's a strange thing to claim that life could be silicon-based in space if that's more possible than carbon. Silicon-based life forms are even less likely in space, making the odds even worse. The only place we see silicon-based life forms is in science fiction films. That's where this idea belongs. It's a fiction, it's not science. I, I don't know if you want me to go ahead and explain why people say it. I mean, if you want to know scientifically why people say it, I mean... Um... Yes, I do, because um, I have heard that on many uh, sci-fi programs. And when Terry actually said that, I almost fell off my chair. Um, yeah. Why, well, I mean, it's, yeah, why, why, why do, do they, they say even go there for silicone... Yeah, why silicon-based? Why not come up with some other idea? But like plastic. Is, yeah, like plastic, for example. <laughs> like some other form, you know, so come up with some other uh, element in the periodic table. Why, why silicon in the first place? Well, <clears throat> the reason why they like silicon-based life forms is because of this. Carbon and silicon share many characteristics. Each has a so-called valence of four, meaning that individual atoms make four bonds with other elements in forming chemical compounds. Each element bonds to oxygen, each forms long chains called polymers in which it alternates with oxygen. They give many reasons why silicon life would not exist that I don't have time to go into, but they make it very clear here. The fact that silicon oxidizes to a solid is one basic reason as to why it cannot support life. So this report, the Scientific American report, is giving you a reason why they find the idea attractive because of the way it bonds with oxygen and the balance of four, and the ability to the bond in the same way as carbon does. <clears throat> but then the same report tells you why it doesn't work in the first place. Silicate compounds that have orthosilicate units also exist in such minerals as feldparks, micas, xylites, or tox. And these solid systems pose disposal problems for living systems. So this report that's actually promoting the idea and telling you why it's actually suitable at the same time is telling you why it didn't work or why it doesn't work. It goes on to say chemists have worked tirelessly to create new silicon compounds ever since Frederick Stanley Kipping showed that some interesting ones could be made. The highest international prize in the silicon area is called the Kipping Award. But despite years of work and despite all of regions available, which means despite all the substances and chemicals available to the modern alchemist, many silicon analogs of carbon compounds just cannot be formed. Thermodynamic data confirm that analogs are often too unstable or too reactive. So the same report that's telling you why it's so suitable for life is telling you, well, it just is unstable and it's too reactive. It develops into something that it actually cannot continue. And this one says the complex dance of life requires interlocking chains of reactions. And these reactions can only take place with a narrow range of temperature and pH levels. Given such constraints, carbon can and silicon can't. So in case you missed it, this entire report is saying it just doesn't work. So it tells you why they think it's attractive. I mean, you can go and check it yourself. Um, the link is there. You can read the whole article, but it tells you why they think it's attractive. And then they go ahead and tells you definitely doesn't work. And finally, this air and space website that's all for silicon-based life forms asks whether silicon life forms are even possible. This report is particularly talking about how it would work 
on a planet like Titan, which is suitable for silicon-based life forms. So remember, this report is for promoting the idea silicon life form can exist, and it's telling you where it's possible, like in a place called Titan. And it ends this whole report with this. Should we expect silicon life on Titan then? Probably not. So I think it's pretty clear. No silicon-based life is likely to exist on another planet. In fact, it's less likely to exist than carbon-based life forms. So that's saying something, isn't it?